Hey guys, Moan Pover here, and this video is all about the letter of intent. So hey, welcome to another video. This channel is all about buying and growing businesses. So if you're new to this channel, um, if you don't know, I think the best way in business in general is to go and buy existing business that's already making money versus starting one from scratch. It's much less risky. And at the same time, you literally need the same amount or even less amount of capital to buy an existing business that's already doing a good amount of pref profit and revenues. And it will take you the same amount of money to, to buy one versus starting one from scratch, which is so much more riskier. Most startups fail, fail in the first few years and you can just go buy one, have existing management team in place, have someone running the business for you and you, you can make an in income from day one. And if you have ideas for startups or just ideas for business in general, you can just implement your ideas into those existing businesses. Um, this is what this channel is all, is all about. I also think that if you have existing business, no matter what your size of business, you can go and the best way, in my opinion, to grow your business isn't by doing more sales and marketing. That's a great way to, to grow a business. But the even better way is to go out there and buy similar businesses to the type of business that you have. And you can use it many times by using uh, basically none of your own capital. You can go and raise that capital from different financial institutions or take loans and grow that way much, much faster. And that's what the biggest companies out there are doing. And I think that's what you can do no matter what the size of your business. And in this video, I'm going to talk about a specific step when you're looking to buy a business. So I'm assuming you're at least thinking about that fact or idea of buying a business and you're out there, you're talking to business owners, you're getting financials from those owners, you're making offers, and now you're getting to a point where ideally one of your offers is getting accepted. So now what's next, right? That's, that's what we're gonna talk about today. So to begin with, if you're sending an offer and your offer get accepted, basically you're getting a yes for one of your offers, you really need to tap yourself, yourself on the shoulders. You, you're doing something which is great. I mean, you, you put the time, you put in the effort, and now you might get yourself into something that you're gonna own for many, many years sometimes with a business that you buy. So really tap yourself on the shoulder, on your shoulder that you got to a point where someone said a yes to your offer and you can get to a point where you actually the owner of that business if you're getting a yes to your offer the next step is now to basically create the loi the letter of intent the loi is where you put all the terms of the deal and really get into i guess the details of the actual uh, acquisition versus an offer and uh, an initial offer is just like literally just the price and terms the loi is going to be include much more things in the agreement and i'm going to uh, i guess show you what kind of things you want to make sure you have in your loi so first of all obviously you want to have the terms right so how much you pay at completion at closing how much is going to be paid over a period of time on deferred payments if it's going to be earn outs or or seller notes or whatever you also want to make sure, obviously depends on the type of acquisition you're doing, if it's a stock purchase or, or just an asset based purchase. And I have videos on that separately, but uh, you want to make sure you know what kind of assets you're getting when you're buying the business. And if you're buying the, the business with the liabilities, you want to make sure you know the numbers that you're going to see there as well. You want to make sure you have the amount of working capital that you're going to see in the business. And you also want to make sure that you have an agreement on the amount of time of non-compete that the owner basically won't be able to go and work uh, and, and compete with you, right? In the same industry or sector or whatever you agree with him on. An LOI is also just another step in the process. After the LOI, when you're going to close and actually buy the business, you're going to move into much more detailed agreement, which is the sell and purchase agreement. So the LOI is, is not really binding on in, in each of the sides. It's just a way to, to kind of like have basically a mutual understanding that you both agree on a specific deal. Now, the deal can still change during the due diligence after you sign the LOI, but you basically have an encore somewhere to start with. So again, a few things you want to make sure are, first of all, the price and the terms. You want to have the deal structure and to, to make sure you know if it's a stock purchase or an asset purchase. You want to have the amount and terms of the seller debt or seller financing or earnouts if it depended on milestones or anything like that. Obviously, you want to know the working capital amount at closing as well. And you also want to have the transition period of that owner and the non-compete agreement with him as well. 
Now at this stage, if you're uncomfortable or don't have the experience to review those things on your own, this is a time where you want to bring your lawyer into the table. You want him to help you with creating this LOI um, and, and help you to review it. Because obviously, if you're not a lawyer yourself, you want to have someone with that experience to help you. At least uh, this is the time where you really want to get your lawyer involved in the game for the first time. And remember, this is the LOI is just the, the time to put like the really key terms of the deal eventually the LOI is going to be replaced like I said with the sell and purchase agreement and just to give you an example the LOI can be like three four pages sell and purchase agreement can get up to like 30 40 pages so yeah that's it for today I just wanted to make sure you understand what's an LOI what kind of things you want to have in the LOI um, it's really really important that you have those things in your agreement ideal you also add some kind of a penalty if the basically the, the seller is going to back off the deal so you want to have you want to have him uh, you want to make sure that he's committed to this acquisition just as much as you so ideally you add that as well um, but yeah that's pretty much it for today um, thank you for all your messages keep them going guys I like getting feedback from you guys comment below like the video if you didn't yet subscribe share with your friends and see the links in the description below join our group on Facebook if you didn't yet we have awesome discussions there on just business buying in general and really really awesome people some of you guys message me some of you are buying businesses bought businesses in the past some of you have existing successful businesses who want to grow your existing business by acquisitions some of you have no experience at all and just want to buy your first business you're all welcome to the group share your questions there and feel free to also ask your questions in the comment below let me know if you knew what's an LOI before that or if I uh, added some value to you with this video and gave you a few ideas on things you want to add to your LOI and also as you see I'm trying to post daily so see in the description below there is a link to a survey where you can put your details and your personal questions and I'll create personalized videos for you so yeah hope you enjoyed it um, and I'll see you soon